Every day throughout South Asia, believers face many kinds of opposition for their faith in Jesus. National missionaries and their families are often the ones who suffer the greatest for sharing the love of Christ with those in need. Persecution in some regions takes the form of imprisonment, separating families for years. Before his recent release, this pastor spent the last eight years of his life in prison. Yes, my daughter was very small then. She was only 10 months old when I was imprisoned. Although my wife and I both went through very testing moments in life, she remained faithful to the Lord. She never thought of quitting on me. But because of these eight years of absence, my daughter sees me as a stranger. I was not able to be a father to her all those years. Ever since my husband was jailed, life was never the same. We had to go through lots of struggle. I would spend the night crying with many tears. I could not stop crying for the loneliness and pain of separation from my husband. My time in prison was not in vain. I was able to spend time in prayer and reading the Bible. I had determined that whether I am going to get released from prison or not, I am going to tell people about Jesus. I am going to tell the inmates about Jesus Christ. By the time I was released from prison, there were over 50 inmates who came to Christ or met regularly for worship. I am encouraged by Paul's letter to the Romans, where he says, What can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble, distress, persecution, hunger? The Lord taught me to come to Him in patience and persistence in times of trouble. Our area mission leader and the local church stood with us through their prayers and support. They would visit my wife and encourage her, giving her assurance about my release. Not only the leaders and the local pastor, but also the believers from our church helped my wife and daughter with their needs. Also in South Asia, this pastor was sentenced to prison for showing a film on the life of Jesus and leading people to Christ. His recent release came after spending the last three years separated from his wife and young daughter. I had a call from the Lord and I was feeling it rather quite strongly. The Lord was asking me to go to some other interior places of my nation and share the gospel to the people. It is very difficult to share the gospel in my nation. If they find out that I am sharing about Jesus Christ to the people, the village authorities can take severe and harsh action for sharing the gospel. It was very painful to be jailed for three years and be separated from my family and child. If we cry over our losses and hurts, we will not move ahead. We will not see God's doings and miracles. We should rejoice in the times of persecution and trials. It is a responsibility and duty of a wife to encourage her husband to fulfill his call from the Lord. I must pray for him and encourage him to serve the Lord faithfully. God is sovereign, and I accepted my suffering in prison for my Lord's sake. Jesus had to go through beatings, humiliation, and death. My suffering was nothing compared to the pain and agony that our Lord went through. I thank God because it was only for three years. It could have been much longer. There are many prisoners in the jail who are serving life terms. There is no hope for them to ever come out of the prison and hear about Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for sending me to the jail because so far there has been no single individual who had ever gone to the prison in my country and shared the gospel to the prisoners. As you already know, this is a very special day set apart for us to enter into the suffering, the pain, the agony of multiplied millions of the people of God in many nations who are going through incredible suffering, persecution for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day of prayer for the persecuted church. Now you have seen it. Only an example of what is going on in so many nations. Kind of help me to remember what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, I was in prison, you came to see me. I was naked and you clothed me, and I had no one you cared for me. You see, my brothers and sisters, we are commanded in Hebrews chapter 13 
to enter into the pain, the suffering of these people as though we ourselves are chained to their wrist in prison, in their beating and suffering. Please, may we not only understand what is going on, be aware about it, like you just been made aware of through the suffering of these dear brothers for the sake of Christ. Let us take time to pray, to fast, and then ask the Holy Spirit to give us a sense of their pain that we will become those people who will stand in the gap and pray and earnestly pray and do all we can for the suffering church. Thank you for doing it.